119 Ministries. I found them on uh, on, on YouTube, and I, I I thank uh, you guys for giving me the information to help track down who might represent the Hebrew Roots Group. They're a, a fairly good sized YouTube channel, and they have tons of video content. What I love about 119 Ministries, two things I like about them, because I'm gonna a lot I'll disagree with, but I'll start with what I like. First off, 119 Ministries, they're calm, they're thoughtful, um, they they are discussing issues. Um, I like their attitude about it, but I also like that they will actually tackle the scriptures, right? They don't just give big sweeping arguments for obeying the law of Moses. They'll actually go to the actual verses of the Bible that we need to debate about, and they'll talk about them. Because I'll tell you what, I had a hard time finding anybody in the movement who would deal with, say, 1 Corinthians or Colossians or Ephesians, you know, who would actually look at Rome. All right, so yeah. That's that's the statement, um, and that's the attitude that uh, a lot of uh, Christianity takes uh, when it comes to discussing the Torah observant community. And uh, this is kind of kind of sort of how I can tell he probably didn't didn't do uh, a whole lot of in depth research concerning the movement um, because this this attitude like the epistles and, and the letters of Paul are in some way this like oversweeping sledgehammer of truth against Torah observance. Um, that's the, that's the attitude that people who really haven't taken a deep look into the movement, um, take. And it's because that's how they view, uh, the, the letters of Paul themselves. So they have, uh, kind of pasted their view of the letters of Paul over the movement as a whole. And uh, so there's this assumption that there's going to be um, a, a fear and avoidance of the letters of Paul uh, when the reality is uh, First Fruits of Zion, again, a wonderful, wonderful resource. Uh, highly recommend them. I think uh, alongside of Torah resource, those two I always recommend before any others. Um because they have such a wonderful, gentle approach, uh, and it's it's very thorough, very scholarly. Um, so Boaz Michaels and D. Thomas Lancaster at First Fruits of Zion, uh, both of them are are more than happy to address the epistles. And uh, Tim Hegg and his son, and I'm sure any of the other scholars at Torah Resource, are more than happy to address the epistles. They have. They actually have entire studies on the epistles. And... Uh, for any of you who've been following alternate media for any length of time, you guys know that myself and my colleague Seamus, we are more than happy to address the epistles. There's no fear when it comes to the epistles. Um, but this idea that Paul has this extreme anti-Torah philosophy, uh, that's actually what, what I'll explain further, uh, probably in this video, but there's an extreme uh, misunderstanding of what Paul is saying, and it comes from predominantly a, a disconnect from uh, the Pharisaic philosophy, because Paul was a Pharisee, so if we're going to understand his words, we have to understand them from the point of view of a Pharisee. How do we know this? Well, Scripture tells us uh, blatantly that Paul was a Pharisee. Um, even after, after the Damascus Road, he still self-identifies as a Pharisee. Uh, but furthermore, uh, 2 Peter 3.16, Peter explains... Um, that the uneducated and unstable will twist the words of Paul because they are difficult um, to their own destruction. Now, it's important to note and important to remember that in the time that Peter was writing these words, okay, he says uneducated. Uh, he's not. He's obviously not talking about a uh, like a school education in terms of you know like like we have the public school system, the private school system. We're not talking about grade school. Um, but seminaries also did not exist at this time. Bible college did not exist at this time. So the only theological instruction, um, the only formal theological instruction uh, by which one could declare themselves educated uh, that existed in the time that Peter was writing these words is that which came at the feet of a rabbi who would likely have been a Pharisee. In most cases, would have been a Pharisee. Uh, so... We have uh, blatant evidence in Scripture where Peter himself is telling us, if you don't understand how Pharisees think, you're not going to understand what Paul is writing. And that really is at the center of this misunderstanding that Paul is this 
amazing shield against the Torah uh, observant community, um, or that he's he's some kind of you know mass army leader against it. Um, Paul actually presents some of the absolute greatest defenses of Torah observance when understood in the proper context. Uh, so uh, I, that just needed to be said. 